Hi, everyone, and welcome to another one of our weekly uh, live on LinkedIn, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. Um, I'm Julia DeMauro, the founder of the IBD Hub, and today we're going to do a new format um, where we're going to coach live um, some of our listeners um, for 10 minutes, minutes each. And uh, we will pick up also some questions from the comments. So if you're here, um, please say hi in the comments. Tell us uh, where you're connecting from in the world. Um, all the guests that will be on today are coming from everywhere. Um, so I'm super excited to know also where you are coming from. Um, this episode is brought to you by the IBD Hub, which is a consulting and business coaching company specialized in architecture and engineering practices. Um, so uh, do not hesitate to go and see our website, which is here below, uh, the ibdhub.com. So today is a bit of a special format, as I said, um, because I really wanted to take some of the questions that I keep getting uh, during my coachings and during the consultations. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to have uh, uh, some people to ask their questions as well and uh, give you a little bit of input um, on what people are asking and uh, what are the answers to some key uh, questions. So the first one to uh, be on today is Man Mohit, who comes from India. Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Where are you calling us from today? So I'm calling you from Mumbai, India. I'm an architect by profession and uh, I have my own practice. We are working for developers and uh, interior design uh, projects as well. Okay, and um, how is it going there after COVID? Is the project still ongoing good and, and working to plans or is it a bit disrupted? Uh, well, it was interrupted initially, but uh, it's coming back on track now. We have okay. projects that are uh, now live, and uh, yeah, we are close uh, we're on deadlines and you know the cost restrictions as always. Yeah, of course. Well, great. That's amazing. So you had a question for me today. Yes, my uh, question is that how can we deal with clients who change their requirements, and uh, that makes a difference in the client brief, you know? So how do we deal with that? So you mean that throughout the, the project, they keep changing requirements uh, during the process and that makes you waste a lot of time? A lot of time, a lot of efforts, uh, you know. A lot of money probably as well. Yes, yes, nine hours. <laughs> so um, let me ask you this. Why do you think um, this happens? Like... Well, what is, uh, is it some specific clients that do it or is it like every client let me let me put it why is because of the business model and uh, of course uh, the current pandemic situation uh, everyone over here is there to do business right and they want to sell the units if they're making a building or if it's a residential apartment he wants to save his money if it's an office space then they need to reconsider their entire uh, you know the business pattern so it's it's business primarily at the back of it yeah um well usually it can be for two things i mean from my experience when clients change their minds quite often it's either that they are not really aware uh of how architecture is practiced so like a lack of experience to to read plans or to read uh, uh, you know, the technical drawings and not be able to take a decision straight away. Um, it can be that also um, the architect is not able to lead the client towards an option that they prefer. Um, I don't know which one of these you, you think could be uh, a potential uh, uh, issue but usually as a architect you need to place yourself as really like the expert right like um, 
you are the person that knows the most about design and about architecture. So it is okay to provide some um, options to the client, but you really should manage to explain him very simply what is the pros and the cons for every option. And with that, mm -hmm. you can slightly advise him on which one you think is more rational or more um, perfect for that project. Um, if you can't position yourself as an expert um, and you are too open to, to what they ask, what tends to happen is that they start to doubt, like, are you like really the professional taking the lead, right? Because sometimes right, like, right. you know, like we are a bit like set back because we want to please as much as possible the client. Um, but then in the end it becomes some kind of an issue because we don't dare to tell them what is best and they lose kind of faith that you're the the person to go to for for the design and and for that profession right does that does that make sense a little bit to what i'm saying i i understand where you're coming from uh yeah so yeah that is that is important but it's also important for the client to be clear about their objectives yeah uh, true. we often you know we often start with a particular target uh, with a particular cost and time and then if the target changes it has an impact on the cost and time so yeah, yeah i agree with you that we need to be quite certain and professional yeah. about uh, what we're looking at yeah it's also i mean it's also a cultural thing right like i mean in holland we are quite direct actually okay. when it okay. comes to uh having meetings and so on so what i would suggest to you is always um send out an agenda of the meeting uh prior right. to the meeting so you cover all these points and um every phases that you have try to have a, a a list of all the requirements that the client asked for that phase so that you can mm -hmm. always go back to this piece of paper and say like no you wanted this you know like mm -hmm. it's okay mm -hmm. we can change it but we're sticking to the first requirements as well right, right? and do not hesitate also and i know that that's also very direct but like if you have to basically waste a lot of hours redoing some stuff because they are asking for things that are completely different you can always put up a boundary saying like okay i will do this this time but next time that we change everything you will have to add some costs to it because in the end we're paid by hour so that's why for each phase it is super important to really have the requirements of the clients what you have to hand in as documents and also the amount of hours that you and your team will do so that is written on paper you know what i mean and then mm -hmm. once they change and it goes to uh, many hours extra you can always refer it back and even ask them for payment like i know it sounds weird because us architects we don't really dare to like ask for money right um and there is a lot of competition but it is so important to be very clear and very strict on what you promised each other at the beginning of the phase and what they get at the end of the phase right, right. um if that makes sense to you i don't know if i am yeah if i got it right for your specific uh um example yes yes thank you so much i think uh, that does give a bit of a direction but uh, you know uh, putting out the agenda initially is important documenting is obviously very important uh, these are some of the techniques which we have even uh, embraced from the mri cs qualification that i hold yeah. and uh, yeah it, it, it's important to uh, you know uh, be clear like we just said so thank yeah, you yeah exactly the more uh, to be honest the, the and that's for any negotiation huh it's not just for architecture or during the process but the more you are clear about what you want and what they want 
uh, the more it goes smooth. Because if you don't put any boundary and they keep asking you to change, if you don't say anything, they they will think it's okay to do so, right? Mm. Like, so if you make just a comment saying like, okay, I will do it, but this is, you know, uh, a bonus for you, then mm. it, straight away it puts the mood, right? Like it's like, okay, I'm doing it because I, I really think you're a great client, but this is not mm. how we usually proceed, right? So right, right, right. It, it helps to, to show the boundary where they should stop. Uh, and, and it's true in her profession, we're not so good at doing that. So <laughs> I hope that we will get better. Uh, in doing that so we can all also get paid more for what we do which is uh, obvious all right. um, thank, thank you, you thank so you. much i will uh take now jonas is next hello jonas. hello how Salam. are you i'll be fine yeah i'm jonas from uh, pakistan karachi live Basically, yeah. I do a job in uh, Nest Park, basically National Engineering Services Pakistan. It's a semi-government fund. Okay. But I am basically in uh, 3D visualizer, and I do settle my own business as a part. I'm not a part time, but I will. Do, I want to do my own business. Yeah. We have client here, like interior and architecture, because I have, I have ten ten year of experience in design. You know. Okay. So I want I do design, and I want to go. For execution, for construction, or for you know execution of interior, yeah, for everything. So it's very easy for me to talk with client about you know design or about time management for everything. But my question is, my my I guess problem is, I hesitate to tell them about amount, about charges, about work. This is the um, main issue. I guess it's personal or it's official. I, I don't know. What is it? What it is it? Is it um? Do you think it's a personal uh, blockage that you do, like like you don't dare, like you're shy, or what? I what do you know, think? Basically, basically, I understand. Every when clients say, "I want to, I want this, I will, I will, I will have to do this," you, I can understand. I know about time management. I can do when I see a project when client is describing. I I just see it today, and I I know that it's my eight year of Eight eight yeah. hours will take to complete, but when it says how much you will pay, will cost uh, for this, I I like oh, I don't know. <laughs> like I just <laughs> this yeah, is the main well, issue. I guess I don't know what. Um, we discussed this also last week in the live. Uh, I think it's you need to make this exercise where you are conscious of your value as a designer. I guess market. like because. People that don't know their value, they don't dare to charge for it because they're not sure. They're like, oh, but it's just me. Like people are paying me for this. Like, you know, maybe I'm not good enough compared to other people or something like, you know, it, it, I think it might come from um, the fact that you're not sure 100 percent of your worth and your value and like, I, I know that you're a great designer and I know that what you do you do it really well but you need to convince yourself that that's the case right um yeah. so i think that that's because you're not the only one i had this question before <laughs> so, um and it comes from the fact that um as architects sometimes we forget um our values and we forget what purpose we have right as a designer regardless if it's 3D visualizing or other work, you want to make people dream about your projects, I guess. Like, this is what you want to do. And this is why you work so hard to get all these skills to get there. Um, and now it's time to share it with your clients. Um, and your clients, believe me, if they want work from you, is because they believe that you can do it. So putting up a price shouldn't be a problem because your worth is uh, you know extremely good so why not showcase the price um, if you're scared to lose the client because of your price 
you can always tell him like, okay, I make you a proposal, but if you have any issues with this proposal, let's talk about it. So they don't just walk away. You know what I mean? Like it's about being very clear. Um, okay. I make you a proposal. You can see the price and you put the price a little bit above what you want actually. <laughs> and then you send it to them and you, you can call them or meet them again and say, okay, what do you think about the price compared to how much work I'm doing? And if they want a price that is lower, you can start taking off some of the tasks that you put for the proposal. If that makes sense. Yeah, Does it actually. Hello? Does it make sense to you? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, no, I guess some sound trouble. I guess. Oh, you can't. You can't hear me well. I don't know. It's net pro internet problem or something. Okay. Um... Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Julia, you are right. But uh, we are uh, like the person like me. Uh, first. Uh, we cannot write things like you know because we are also government employee no? so we mm -hmm. do as a part-time job sure it's our part-time or we can call it uh, freelance you know yeah so uh, uh, actually we don't go for the written things you know just uh, by we just talk to each other but that's we do their works the main thing is that actually we don't go for proposals and written things you know write up everything I know, but like if it's, it can yeah, be also but, just, uh, but yeah, go yeah the second thing is uh, like uh, one more, I guess, no, because we, India and Pakistan have some, uh, uh, you know, together things, something like we have a client of my uncle, client of my uh, maternal uncle, or something like that, friend of friends, you know, mm -hmm. when they come about the payment, we just cannot tell them, give me the money, you know, how much I will cost for my payment, so these but, are the main issues. But is it something that uh, you bring, like the payment, is it something you talk about very early in the conversation or is it like really late, like after you've done the work or something? Actually, Julia, they run away from us, you know, when when they they are coming to you for the, uh, you know, uh, for work, it's like yeah. they are your brother, you know, they are, they are uh, big brother or uh, elder brother do my work please everything do it for me when you do they they're like run away no they didn't yeah. don't attend your call after that yeah after proposal but, but when you tell when you when you tell them give me the advance money you know i'm your brother I don't i will not run anywhere i'm here do it please i will i will give you all yeah, the money once then yeah. when you uh you know when you uh, deliver the work, then they run away. These are the main issues yeah, here in Pakistan. I when Mohit also, is, uh, I guess, facing it in India because they are we are neighbors, so you know each other. Yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. But then maybe, so I can find two solutions to this, and I'm gonna be harsh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one is like, okay, if it's someone that you know is gonna be like this in this pattern, then maybe don't spend that time doing this yeah. work for this person you know you you are allowed to pick who you work with yeah. so that's one thing the second thing is um it's the more the earlier you bring uh, up the price so like you tell them like okay we can do this and this when you're on the phone but it will cost you this amount yeah. do not deliver the work prior to being paid so like one day before or two days before send your invoice or ask for the payment and then once the payment is made then you deliver what you have mm. to deliver a lot of architecture practices and render companies do that uh, yeah. in order to make sure that companies is not something weird that i'm telling you it's you know some companies do do it like that it's a you know, it's a way to protect yourself and be paid for what you're doing. Yeah. So if they don't pay, they don't get, you know, <laughs> uh, and, and it's okay. And, and, you know, you need to, as a freelancer, you also need to think business. Like, I know that you do that because you really like it and, you know, it's, it's, um, 
a good income on the side but you also need to think like a business person because at the end yeah. of the day these people they will do business their own way as well so you need to think how can i make business out of this otherwise there is no point doing freelance right like if people don't pay you what is the point yeah. then you just you know better stay at home and look at the tv like you know uh, there, there is no need if no one is gonna pay you right so you need yeah. to start thinking like a businessman if i'm doing this i'm i'm gonna tell them how much it will cost so they're aware of it i'm gonna do the work and then once it's ready before sending it i ask them for the money they give me the money i give them the project if not they don't get anything. <laughs> I have to be hard you know, but Yeah, you have. <laughs> of course. Because if you're a freelance, you have to be a businessman as well. It's not just otherwise you just get employed by someone. If you're not a business yeah. person, then you're just employed. Yeah, right? Like mm -hmm. so that's the thin line. If you want to be a freelancer, you really have to have this business mindset and know your value and know how much your hours count. Otherwise, there is no point you sitting now at 10 o'clock in the evening uh, doing some renders instead of spending time with your family or your friends. Uh, you might as well just, you know, do some di something different if, if yeah. you, you know. So try to, to take that into account. I hope it helps a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, don't hesitate to send me any questions uh, through DMs on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. If you have more questions or... I have, I have. I, have, I will ask some one by one. Okay. <laughs> Sounds, <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, see, you, see you very soon, Jonas. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, architects with money, that's really uh, another topic so i'm just gonna publish some comments uh, if you have any questions please also comment so i can see them and share them with you um we have also hosam that says um this is happening because the authorities like municipalities are not doing their job as well any buildings have to take approval and prepare by approved architect or company so they take free design. Yeah, it's true, but it's a problem within the whole field. And this is kind of the issue. If we are all not thinking in the business way, um, we all give things for free and we all do uh, like feasibility studies for free uh, uh, and do work for free and we don't ask for money. So people get used to that. That's also the, the issue uh, of being an architect in, in general, right? So this is also what we're trying to change uh, here is to make people aware um, of what they're worth and uh, that their work is so good that they should ask money for it. Um, so I have another question now. Let me put it out there for you to see. I think Marwa is next. Let's see if Marwa is still online. Hi, Marwa. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hi, how are you? Fine. Uh, Where are you calling okay. us from today? Still Egypt? Yeah, I am, yeah, I am from Egypt. Uh, I'm Marwa Al-Assad. I'm co-founder of Virospace. Uh, an architecture studio specialized in education. Um, and, we have, uh, yeah. Yeah, we have spoke before. We had yeah. one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, session. yeah. So how is it going since then? Is it going uh, well? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, but uh, during COVID-19, it's um, somehow it's a block. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to do, uh, yeah, I'm trying to open uh, new channels yeah uh, but it's all it's all great yeah if uh, if for those who don't know uh, marwa she has a an architecture and design companies that that basically focuses on learning spaces for children outdoors um so last last time we we talked 
it was about how to present your projects um, and put them in the context of COVID, right? Like how uh, like children now um, don't have much space to learn in the schools because they're divided into groups or on online they cannot really learn a lot because uh, of the bad internet connection that you have. So you are proposing outdoor spaces that are safe um, and that help kids to learn outside, right? Yeah. Okay. So what's your question today, Mawa? Um, uh, during my journey, I face a problem when I introduce my project uh, to a school. They accept uh, the technical offer, but um, but the financial offer, they said uh, it's uh, it's too high. Um, and after that, I, I I don't know what shall I do. I mean, how did uh, you how did you make the proposal? What uh, what was the proposal looking like? Um, it's documented, uh, but I don't have that the. the um, uh, yeah, um, I don't have uh, um, the opportunity to show or um, to explain about the, the technical offer or financial offer. So I, mm -hmm. I send it by email, uh, mm -hmm. and I think this is was the, the uh, it's a big issue. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and after I, that, when I ask them, uh, I I want to explain the financial offer. It's not about the the, uh, the total amount. It's uh, separated into parts. You have to uh, take each part uh, as a separate part. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't have the opportunity and the time to explain it, uh, well. Yeah, uh, and after I, that, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, after yeah. that they, they avoid they avoid you or something. Um yeah, yeah. And I don't know how to follow up or or yeah, uh, yeah. follow up with this this, this client. I, I think it's uh, it was a, a good opportunity for me, but I don't have the, um, uh, I don't know how to uh, to follow up with them. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. So, um, what is important when you pitch um, is also to have in mind some kind of a, a number that uh, you will propose. Like even when you first meet them and you do the presentation with with the brochure, uh, like we discussed before, uh, try to have in mind um, the steps and the an amount, a certain amount of money, right? So that when you pitch, you're able to explain them like, look, I think there will be several phases. You don't have to pay everything in one go, um, but I will make a written proposal so you have more insight uh, over it. And then you send the email, right? Um, and in this proposal, in this email, um, try to make it as simple and communicative as possible so that you don't even need to explain it to them. You know what I mean? In a proposal, you should always um, put the phases and what you're going to do in every single of these phases. Also, you can add the amount of hours you will do for every phases. This way, when you send the proposal, um, you will be able to tell them if you want a lower price, we can start reducing some things that I do in each phases, right? Some tasks or some hours. You can start making that smaller so the price go down, if that makes sense, right? Um, and and the more everything is clear, the the the, the, the more there is um, an opportunity there to discuss it because they will be able to read it better. Now, for your situation, you already sent it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's about how to, um, let's say, get them back on track. Um, these people you met at a school or you, you met them through Zoom? How, how did no, it? No, at the school. This is the world before COVID-19. <laughs> okay. 
-hmm. and um, how um, how did the conversation go? Like, what did they want? And um, yeah, what what uh, seduced them about your project? Yeah, they they were accepted and they like it very much. Uh, mm -hmm. But regarding the financial offer, I didn't be able to apply it. This yeah. is the uh, the problem. Uh, and uh, he he just look for the total amount. She didn't lo uh, look at any port or the separated port mm -hmm. um, of, uh, or the stages. I uh, um, yeah. Good. Yeah. And and did you specify? Uh, did you send them an email or try to call them, saying like, um, let's uh, discuss this together so we can? Because the important is to collaborate at the end of the day for you and for them. Yeah. Um, but that didn't work either. Or... Yeah, actually, the con uh, the contact person she left the the school, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't know uh, the the rest of the school again. Yeah. I don't have any contact number, uh, another one except her. Uh, this is uh, what happened. <laughs> but, but you know where the school is, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, so what I would suggest you do um, is actually go to the school and uh, and just ask and, and just explain the situation. Explain that you had a person uh, that you were in contact with for this project and you pitched already to the big boss um, and that uh, you would need to contact this big boss again <laughs> and uh, uh, ask if they can give you the number or if you can set up a meeting with him while, while you're at the school. Like, you know, if they don't reply by phone or by email, just go there. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. You know, because you've been there before. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, um, um, otherwise what you can do is to call the number of the school and ask for the email of the big boss that you saw. That's also a possibility. But try to reach out again. I actually, I, I, actually, I did it. Yeah, I called them and uh, yeah, I asked for the big boss uh, and email. I sent her the email, but she didn't reply. <laughs> okay. Well, the, well, then maybe now you can uh, call again and ask for the phone number. Uh, just say mm. like, uh, listen, I I wrote an email. I think maybe they didn't get it. Is it possible to have the phone number directly so I can talk to him about the proposal? You know, like try to insist yeah. as much as yeah. possible um, because it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't accept the proposal. I think, you know, everyone is a bit distracted with COVID and what is happening and everything. So perhaps it's not even like a problem of your proposal. It's just that for now it's not on the priority list. And of course, for you, it is a priority, but for them, maybe it's not a priority like straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so don't take it as a personal thing, like, okay, I'm just uh, trying too hard here. Uh, try to think of it like, okay, it's not on the priority list, but the more I'm gonna be excited about it and the more I'm gonna show interest, the more they will buy it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's not necessarily related to the price that you put down. It might be a case of uh, a bad communication with that person that left, and then the big boss has other issues to sort out. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is what the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, try to really reach out to to them, and I think he will be he. It's a he, right? Yeah. Yeah, he will be more than happy to see that you're uh, that invested to discuss this proposal with him. I mean, you know, he might have like 20 emails per day. Uh, sure. You don't know. Like, yeah. So, so let, try to, to access it as much as possible. But like next time, please be very clear like that you really want to collaborate together and it has to be a win-win situation. So you're going to make a proposal and they will have to react on it to make sure that you can collaborate no matter what. 
you can tell him like there will be different phases and we can reduce some tasks and some hours per phase in order to reach the number that you had in mind. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Uh, I, yeah, go on. Okay, am I allowed to share my screen to show you the flyer or I don't have time to show? Uh, I think you can share the screen, but I don't know. Um, is there no button at the at the bottom of the screen? Yeah. With we'll share screen, maybe. In the meantime, if anyone has any questions, please put it in the chat and we will answer to it at the end of this um, of this live okay we can see it right okay um you can see the flyer or um, yeah i can see it I can see okay. it. Yeah. If you can put it in a full screen, it's even better. Um, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so um, what was your question about this? Tell me. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, actually, I changed the uh, um, the design what I show before. Yeah. I add the Y uh, the Y yeah. part. Mm -hmm. That looks very good. Yeah. I don't know if uh, uh, this is uh, too much to show, or I have to reduce the um, the, the discussion. Text. Yeah. No, I think it's perfect. It's uh, three key points. It's uh, more than enough for them to read and realize why you're doing this. So I think it's, it's the points that we discussed as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is our methodology, the combination between three parts, content, yeah. content and learning. And uh, this is the step. Yeah. Um, and actually, I make a change here in the go, uh, the part of what I yeah. add, uh, what I, I actually did. I didn't, uh, the previous uh, the flyer, I showed uh, an external or international example. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is um, better or... Um, I think... Because the other one had uh, more specific uh, areas, right? Yeah. yeah. I I preferred the example that you gave me last time, actually, for the what. Okay. Yeah. And um, don't hesitate to give it another title instead of what, maybe call it something else, like uh, um, our experience or... Um, um, example of a project okay. yeah, yeah so, so because they don't know what it means the why the how and the what right so th this is between us um okay. but try to change the title like the why you can say uh how goal or how mission uh for the how you can say um her methodology and for the what you can say our achievements or how previous projects or you know something like that so that uh, they understand better also the the brochure right okay uh this flyer it's uh six paper uh, uh -huh. is it, it's too much or i can reduce no i think it's good it's good don't reduce more it's it's good okay yeah that is <laughs> Perfect. I love it. It's uh, it's really come a long way since uh, <laughs> since last time. I love it. Okay. Wait, I'm gonna stop sharing your screen. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Marwa. I hope I managed to answer a bit of your questions. Um, yeah, thank you. 
and I really hope that um, uh, that yeah it goes ahead. We have Hassam who says, uh, "Did you try to apply your proposal to the Ministry of Education?" That's a yeah. question for you. <laughs> yeah, I tried to reach the to the Ministry, yeah. uh, Minister of Education, the, but they didn't reply. Uh, actually, they have. Um, uh, too much plan and uh, they have a busy agenda and I yeah. think they are oh, yeah but I'm trying to do something like that too. yeah Mawa really try to to get to the women in those organizations <laughs> try to find the women that can then introduce you to the bigger boss like seriously this is really if you charm the women that are up there they will introduce you to the big boss so Please just, just you know, try to find them also on LinkedIn or like in in the websites. Try to reach out to the women, really, because they know the importance uh, that it is your design for the children. Uh, men, they don't get that straight away, and they see it more as a business case. First, convince the women you will get to the top. I swear. Actually, I actually I try to reach to uh, the secretary of uh, the minister. Of education, yeah. uh, but uh, she didn't. After that, she didn't reply. We have a busy, uh, busy agenda, and we. Uh, yeah, but you know, uh, the secretary—they're really like in charge of organizing everything. What you can ask yeah. the secretary is maybe if she can uh, give you the contact of um, someone uh, that is also responsible for the decision making, but is not the big boss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And try yeah. it, like insist. insist. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot to try, you know. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> and I try to reach to the minister uh, uh, directly. Um, I send I send him a message via uh, 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 LinkedIn and Facebook, but uh, they didn't reply. Yeah, but uh, really follow up. Mm. People don't answer straight away, but. Uh, follow up. What what did you ask them? Did you send a CV or something, uh, or did you send a brochure? No, I didn't send any attachment. Just explained via a short sentence uh, what okay, I am good. doing and uh, what I am uh, going to do. Yeah, and this is uh, what I did. I didn't yeah. attach any, any documents. No, but that's a good thing. Try to trigger them to to meet you to know more. Uh, like I said last time uh rather than give everything straight away but you know don't hesitate to write to those people once a week like really once okay. a week you send them a message <laughs> okay i am not a good, yeah actually i'm not a good follow-up but yeah once i'm trying once and uh, twice and third after that yeah. i stop uh, reach for them yeah, yeah but have a, have a list and um and maybe after you know the third time that you email them uh start sending them um posts or articles that you write about the topic okay you know like uh, um, on linkedin you can write an article about uh, the importance to have these spaces right now for covid and so on once you write these article or these posts just send them the link Okay. So it becomes more like a, a newsletter to them. Like it's like, oh, hi! Like check out my new article about uh, uh, education and um, COVID or something. You know, like then it then they get to read it because they don't feel the pressure of giving you something, but then they learn what you do. Okay. You know I mean? Good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nice. And in any case, you can always reach out to me as a. As a <laughs> Thank student. you for your support. Yeah, I'm always. <laughs> Are you did you finish the online course? Because Marwa did the online course on how to start. Uh, I have the last module. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but the, the first three modules I finished. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Well, I'm glad that uh, that at least you got some tips from it. I hope. But, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. It's very useful course, yeah, and I'm highly recommended for any architect. Uh, it's very, it's a short uh, course, and um, you know how to um, how to start your first step, how to start. Yeah. Uh, 
I think this is what I missed from any uh, other courses I uh, I attend. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad that uh, it helps. See you very soon, Marwa. Thank you for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. <laughs> Bye. So guys, this is the end of our live. Um, thank you for all tuning in and for all your comments, all your likes. Um, next week will be a shorter episode because it's the 30th of January so I think a lot of you will be trying to celebrate New Year's Eve the next day um, so have a great Christmas for the ones who are celebrating and um, I see you next week for another topic see you very soon